Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I'm trying to put together my lunar mission. It's going to be in two parts. We're going to have a return vehicle first, send it over there, and then send over a lander. But I have discovered a problem. We have a fairing size limit, and the fairing size limit is 4 meters. So I can't make a big enough... well, I mean I could probably swing something or another. But right now, uh, any sufficiently large rocket isn't going to, well, look good, let's put it that way. We could put, uh, let's say, a decoupler here and put some struts on to make it look halfway decent, but uh, we can't use the normal fairings, which is a bummer. So I'm going to look at the tech tree to see what we need to unlock to get bigger fairings. Uh, but first of all, we have unlocked some engines. We've got the SE2040V. As a vacuum hydrogen oxygen engine capable of 463 seconds of ISP. You can see it's really, really big and it's replacing our previous engine 2 vacuum over here underneath the Lynx. The Lynx has a slightly larger service module and we've unlocked better solar panels because we unlocked that technology. So now these are extendable instead of those flat ones that we had before and they get about 600 watts apiece. So that should be enough combined as long as we keep pointing at the sun, right? Um, even without worrying about hibernation or anything like that. So yeah, super efficient uh, Hydrolox engine here. Not super powerful though. And it's four times as heavy as the engine 2 vacuum. So 361 kilonewtons. It has 10 ignitions. And then I was trying to put at the bottom some methane engines that we just unlocked. I, they're the most powerful engines that come with the Schustrut engine pack. That's the SE uh, 2200, 2200 uh, 1787 kilonewtons and 354.7 seconds of ISP in vacuum. So not as good as a Raptor or anything like that. Uh, I don't know about B4. Might be better than B4 but not as much thrust. It does have some throttling and 10 ignitions. So it was originally designed as a 2000 kilonewton engine, but that was on when I was doing it on paper. And then when I finally crunched the numbers, uh, it came out as the numbers that you see. So anyway, but we can't put enough fuel in here because of the fairing size. Right now, its thrust weight ratio is two off the pad. So we need a bigger tank here, which means we need a bigger inner stage and let me see in the tech tree what we can do about that. So where would fairings be? Um, well, here we have some boat tail adapter stuff. But it doesn't say anything about increasing the size of the fairings. Uh, okay, well, there's an Airstream protective shell, but also doesn't say... Oh, here... Oh, this increases the thrust plate. That doesn't... I don't care about that. <laughs> um, uh, this, this should have, oh, may, oh we have to, uh, oh, we just have to uh, buy the max diameter. It looks like we have, it's this advanced construction lets you get to 12 meters. We just have to do the purchase, hopefully, assuming it works right. Really, I have no idea how this thing works. So I don't even use the thrust plate. I don't know why I unlocked that. Okay, let's see if it works. Yeah, trying to configure that in the... In the files, it's just weird. Okay, so do we have fairing freedom here? If you get just the right location, you can click them even if you don't remove them. Yes, it looks like we do. All right, I don't actually want that size. Anyway, I will continue configuring this rocket, maybe painting it something nice, and then we will talk more about it. But the aim here is basically being able to send it's about 16 tons to the moon, so that is our payload capacity, about one-third of a Saturn V. And then we'll do the mission in two pieces, and hopefully it'll work out. Uh, it might be that I might need some more capacity for the lander. We'll think about that, because one of the nice things about this is uh, this doesn't have to carry enough fuel to push the lander as well as itself into lunar orbit. But that means that you know, the lander side is going to have to need some extra help. So I'll think about that. But anyway, let's keep working on this. 
So I've had a bit of a change in plans. I was initially planning to have a methane oxygen first stage with the hydrogen oxygen second stage, but I found that that would go beyond our pad limit of 800 tons, which is one reason why we are splitting the eventual moon landing mission into two. Uh, but yeah, I couldn't quite make the methane oxygen thing work out for me. At least not while keeping the tanks aluminum lithium, which I intended to do. If we go for lighter tanks like balloon tanks or something, maybe. But so I've moved the methane oxygen engines into boosters. Instead, we have four of these SE2150 hydrogen oxygen sea level engines. So they get 406 sea level to 435.9 vacuum. They're staged combustion, 3000 PSI, about the same thrust. Uh, so, but they're much more expensive than the methane ones. We uh, get those for 7,600. Uh, these are 11,800. So more expensive, but we can use fewer of them if we, uh, you know, have a lighter thing, which the hydrogen oxygen provides. Uh, originally, I was planning for seven methane oxygen engines on the bottom, and it would sort of have been like a new Glen, just better, <laughs> basically. Uh, but no dice as far as keeping that under the limit, so we have this. As far as the paint job is concerned, I've uh, decided to go with a new logo. I've got a raised airspace logo. It's sort of somewhat distorted here. Uh, the, the main logo is actually a triangle that was meant to go on vertical stabilizers, and it'd just be the purple and red part up to the diagonal. But uh, for a flag, I put the black field in as well. So black, red, and purple. So far, I haven't had a logo as such. Uh, for the Elegant Design Bureau, it was just the letters EDB in a font in red. Uh, basically the same red that's currently on that portion of this flag. And then for Raise Aerospace on the title, you see that it's just Raise Aerospace in letters in that same color. So, but yeah, I decided that it's time for a logo, but then I also decided to paint the rocket in those colors. The benefit of those colors, as far as logo is concerned, is it's distinctive. There aren't a whole lot of people that are going with red and purple. Uh, so, uh, but painting the rocket in that color might be going too far. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Anyway, we'll leave it be for now. Uh, so this is going to cost us 232000 and what I'm thinking is we're going to have the lunar orbit contract. Remember, there was a contract to send crew into orbit around the moon. And we'll use this for that. And it's possible that we can just reuse the one of the pods that we already have. But I think I'll just build a new new one. I don't know. Uh, Kerbal construction time. Let me just save this for now and pop out and see what we've got. Maybe next time I'll just recover normally and get the value back instead of trying to refit the pod. And then we could scrap this one. Let me scrap the S one. See what kind of value we get. We got a little bit. I don't think we got a whole lot. Okay, as far as what the contract pays potentially, we can't pick it up yet because it takes so long to build this that we can't. Uh, it'll be up in 365 days. But the full completion gives us 260, so it's not super worth it, but it's good for a test run. We're using new engines after all, so they're all new engines, except for the ones on the pod itself. So it would be good. We have some redundancy, not a whole lot. There's two hydrogen-oxygen engines on the upper stage right now. Uh, they're probably not tilted right so that it can avoid spinning around and around if I tried to just use one, so it's tough to eyeball those things. Maybe uh, RCS build aid or something could figure that out, but I'm not sure. Okay, so yeah, we will build one and take the risk, and we'll see what happens. Okay, so we'll start building that. As, all, as it so happens, we have a Mars window in 628 days, though. I really want to do the Mars flyby mission. So... Maybe we should... Got the Venus things, too. But since this finishes longer than that, I mean, we could toss in some more build points, but maybe we should just get a Mars probe ready for that window and build that right up front, and then build this afterwards. So let me cook that Mars 
probe up. We just need to do a Mars flyby. There is a flyby contract here. Mars flyby gives us two years. But we should, of course, have the probe ready before that. And then we can get this done. That will unlock the Jupiter flyby. And then until we do the Mars flyby, we can't do that one. The Jupiter flyby allows for some of these others. Uh, though apparently Saturn just requires the Mars flyby, I guess because of Pioneer. Deimos and Phobos flybys. We have to do the Mars flyby first, annoyingly enough. Otherwise we could have picked them all up at the same time and done Phobos and Deimos on the same mission, right? Oh well. Okay, let me get a definite, guaranteed sort of Mars probe so that we don't mess that up this time. We've messed it up before. And let me make sure that we've got something that will be reliable. Okay, so for the Mars probe, we're just using our regular SC2060 engine and the same rocket with the Engine 2 vacuum, except I've got an alternate red and purple paint job. Maybe this one is more pleasant, though of course it's on a white field. Maybe I should go with a black field on that. Uh, we'll see. Anyway, the probe has plenty of antennae. It's got eight of these helix antennae on an action group, plus the parabolic antenna. Just in case I mess up, we have an always open big antenna, you know. And we do have the launch antennae on the stage as well. Uh, we have MHM on three tanks. They are high pressure, made sure of that. And we've got an uh, engine that actually uses them. Uh, yep. So just one kilonewton engine, nothing fancy, long burn time, but you know, what do we want? Uh, we've got the new solar panels. Uh, it doesn't actually show the output on at Mars, but there we go. Uh, the core should only take 50 watts, uh, so that's plenty at Mars with two of them. And yeah, the little RCS thrusters and of course the science. So, yeah, this should be enough Delta V to get us over to Mars, at least on a flyby, if not a capture. Uh, I'm hoping for getting into orbit, but we don't know that for sure. So, I'm going to build one of these, and um, maybe another one, just as a backup. Okay, so, 26 days for each of these. Okay, so, on to the Mars window. We do have a communication line from Mars. I wonder what that is, <laughs> that we still have to do a flyby. Got a Mars probe there and a Mars probe 2 there. How have we not done the... Well, I guess we'll have to launch a new one anyway. Why didn't we end up with a Mars flyby? <laughs> I forget. Well, this one seems pretty lively. It's got all the comms and all this stuff. Well, it's time to pick up the contract anyway. Well, I mean, if they're gonna give us money, I'll take it. So, yep. New vessel, I mean, the one we have over there already won't count. Hopefully we'll get it done this time. It's just a mystery to me how we managed to not get it done before. We don't have any satellite. Well, there's a stationary orbit around Deimos. A lot of duration. I mean, if we don't make it this time, we'll make it eventually. That's pretty good. Station. I don't even know if a stationary orbit is possible, but they've given the orbit specifics, so... Gosh, it's hard to hit a particular orbit around Deimos, though. The RCS is tough. But we'll try it for that kind of money. Be grossly mistaken about my ability to do that. We'll see. Okay, here we go. Throttle up. SAS on. Ignition. And launch. Dusk launch here at the Cape. Okay, and separation and ignition. Off that all goes. And fairing set. Well, this has been sort of a messed up trajectory. We're really, really cutting it close to the atmosphere, and we have less delta V than I was expecting out of this stage. I doubt we'll make orbit around Mars. We will 
Do the flyby, that's the important thing. Okay, and shut down 216 by 142. Supplementary antennae out. And solar panels out. Well, we have the Delta V to get to Mars, just not to capture into orbit around Mars like this. But alright, let us sort that out. Okay, I just had MechJet plot a route to Mars, and we have it with 4,318 meters per second. Again, I don't think we're going to make orbit, but at least we can do what we're supposed to do. So, we will continue. We'll be very close to the node at the start of the burn, because the front end of the burn is going to be done with this stage in less than 43 seconds. So, that will be alright. Hopefully we'll have comms. But we can let this stage run out, so... As long as we have comms at the start, it should be okay. Okay, making sure the fuel is settled. And ignition. Okay, and staging. And ignition. Okay, well this part is long. 14 minutes stage time. I think our links will be ready before this probe is actually going to reach Mars. It's going to be ready in 83 days. So we'll do that mission and then we'll catch up with this afterwards. Okay, well, we haven't got an apparent encounter. Let's see what we need to do. Oh, okay, we've got some radial issue. Okay, I'll replot. Somehow, I always manage to use all of my Delta V. Well, that'll be close enough. Okay, we'll have the Delta V. Let's do this burn first. And go. Okay, hopefully the mid-course adjustment will still be okay. I'm gonna do this as well as possible. Let's see. Well, it's a bit crashy. Okay, that's better. Right. But that will be after we do our lunar orbit mission. So let me add that to the alarm clock. And we'll check up on it when we get there. But first, uh, let us finish building our Lynx S3 and hope everything goes well there. Okay, we have completed construction of the Lynx S3 and I'm going to go into Mission Control and we want Human Orbital. And that's a heck of a failure cost, but actually we can weather it at least, but yeah. Uh, crew 1, new vessel, 365 days. Uh, it has to be tight orbit around the moon, not a loose orbit, no no fudging it like that. And we have to land or splash down, so we're going to take it. Okay, and that maxes out our available contracts. The other ones are long-term contracts, but we ought to get them done so we have more contract slots available. And we are not doing that, no. Uh, roll out. Take six days and 18 hours. We should actually get a Venus window in here. 49 days. Well, okay, maybe, maybe we'll hold off until next time for checking up on our Mars probe just so that we can put together something for Venus. Uh, we've, we do have some missions for that, after all. Spe another specific orbit, and we could do the... Uh, we have the science stay from the surface. So, yep. Yeah. Okay, um... Is Val's got one star. We've got Milden with two stars, actually. Um, I don't know how many stars Jeb has, so let's see. Oh, Val and Jeb have the same amount. Let's go... Well, let's just go Jeb. It's a little bit more dangerous, so... It is traditional that Jeb may perish in these things, so... Launch. Well, Jeb must be impressed by the paint job on his rocket. 
You know, the thing is, people talk about paint jobs like painting the Delta 4 blue or something like that to match the Delta 2. What we really need is different colored insulation foam. Our issue is that it only comes in one color. I mean, you gotta have to put this stuff on anyway. It's gotta be a way to get different colored insulation foam. Then you don't even have to talk about the paint job. You just pick your foam. Especially since this thing is all hydrolox on the core. The fun thing about the Lynx is how it looks like it basically has eyes. So, anyway. SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. Remember, all of these engines uh, we are running for the first time. So we will see how that works out for us. It's already sort of sideways. <laughs> It's already sort of sideways. 11 days. We're gonna have to keep an eye on the food, water, and oxygen stuff. 11 days should be enough. Okay, we're looking good. Well, I, I, I think I might want a slightly duller purple and red, actually. It looked a little bit less bold <laughs> in the VAB. Hmm. Slightly darker will do. Better texture would be nice. It's too flat. Booster separation. Alright, those worked fine. These engines do throttle a bit. Not a whole lot. I think to 55%. On par with uh, the Russian staged combustion engines. Okay, and separation and ignition. Some deviation, but we're okay. Two engines, again new. And launch escape system jettison. That worked fine. Now we're really festive. <laughs> Looks like we've got extra Delta V actually, which is good because the lander is probably going to be heavier. I really need to nail down which purple I'm going for. <laughs> I've been picking random purples. Okay, and shut down 191 by 181. And it looks like this stage has about 700 extra, maybe 600 meters per second extra. So that's good to know. If I mean, I think we will want to keep this uh, injection stage instead of trying to carry it to the moon to make orbit or anything. Uh, so but it was a thought that we could add MLI layers and then use this to have the lander make orbit. But we'll just go ahead right now and aim for our trip to the moon. Uh, that should be good enough. Uh, what was the minimum? 20 kilometers, so yeah, that'll be fine. We'll make that transfer. I didn't put a core on here. We should probably do that so that it can deorbit itself, potentially, and power and all that business. Okay, well, go. Let's turn us. Well, they both relit. Set ignitions all together. I mean, plenty of mean time before failure. Uh, 10 minute rated burn time. We're using 8 minutes of that, I think. It's gonna be quick. And. Ooh, I did a pretty good job on that one. Oh, just a little bit of a RCS correction will do. 622 extra. Alright, that'll be good enough for now. Okay, well, we want the RCS thrusters on the links to be active. Might as well get the engines active. All right. It's the right thing, right? Okay, separation. Separation. Okay. That's fine. A little bit of clipping on the door for the solar panels. Oh. 
the front RCS isn't working very well. I think we have to add crossfeed. It looks like maybe I should put some RCS tanks in the pod or something. Well, we strictly speaking don't need those until we need to dock, but we will eventually need to dock, so I'll keep in mind to fix that. But for now, we can just go over to the moon and then fix this, so we will. These panels actually rotate. Oh, but we have the time warp problem. That's usually associated with KSP Interstellar. There must be a way to fix that, because I've figured out a way around that before. Okay, we have entered Lunar SOI, and we need to get our orbit up a bit. We have 2,174 meters per second, you'll notice. That's a lot of spare, whatever we need to do. Rendezvous with stations, the whole nine yards. Well, we will need to try the engines to make this correction. Okay, that's good enough. Don't really need all of them for most burns. Okay, on to periapsis. Oh, there's that power draw. Well. Let's see if there's some science around here. Oh, I didn't put the science. Shoot. Crew report? Mm, not worth anything. I don't think they said we have to transmit anything back. We just have to get over here and then get back. Still an 8 minute and 20 second stage though. So, retrograde. Okay, ignition. Obviously, the four engines here are clustered together so that if one goes out, hopefully the others can tilt through the center of mass. And they're 12 kilonewtons apiece. 313.7 second ISP with MMH and Mon 3. We're looking for an apoapsis below 300 kilometers. And we have to hang out there for 20 hours, it looks like. Seven days left of food, water, and oxygen. Okay, well that's the specified orbit, or close enough. That leaves us with 1400 meters per second, and it's okay with this, we just have to hang out for 20 hours. This version does not allow for EVAs. The lander one will, of course. That doesn't have the shell on top. Okay. Well, that's all complete, we just need to go back. Okay, about 47 minutes. Alright, node. Okay, ignition. And they're all lit. Not a trivial thing, they still do have the possibility of failure, it's just very rare. I mean, 0.74% ignition failure probability and then the mean time before failure, uh, 2,377 minutes. So, would be a while, but can happen. Okay, we have Lunar Escape. And we're getting our periapsis there. Okay, that's too much. This thing turns so slow. This Sosa needs stronger RCS. I put the 100 Newton ones instead of like what Apollo had, the 400 Newtons. Okay, uh, what I wanted was attitude adjustment. Oh, stopping time can be like 8 seconds with RCS. Uh, it overshot. Uh, maybe 8 seconds is too much. Okay, I'll take 58. And we've got sunshine. Yep, we're directly facing the sun. We'll get hot in the pod like this, but we'll go with it for now. But again, yeah, past a certain time warp. I forget, there is there is a thing. There was a way to solve that. I just have to remember what it is. 
Okay, well, there's Earth. Careful of the time warp again. And we're probably come da coming down into the Amazon or something. Or at least it looks like South America right now. Okay, service module separation. And we're now on the internal thrusters. These up here never worked. Keep forgetting to fix that or figure out how to fix that. Okay, surface negative. Note that we did fit a docking port in preparation for the ultimate mission with the lander. Okay, entering the atmosphere. Okay, surface module destruction is occurring. And has occurred, that was quick. Okay, we have flame effects. There is overheating. And again, maybe I should see what happens if we remove the custom drag cube from this heat shield, because that seems to be getting in the way of ablation. Might even be causing the overheating, actually. Because when I tested the Goku, that didn't have a custom drag cube. It had plenty of ablation, but no overheating. Well, the G-Force is holding steady. Okay, we are through it. Our peak G is 6.3. Okay, aero cap separation. Okay, a little bit more violent than I was expecting. I think that's because of the docking port collider. Hmm. Anyway, we'll keep that in mind. Okay. Parachutes armed. Initial parachute deployment. And full parachute deployment brings us to a very safe 5 meters, well, 4.8 meters per second. Okay, splash down and recover. I'm gonna go with a normal recovery, I think. Oh, it didn't seem to let me do that. Okay, it doesn't let me do a normal recovery. Recover the VAB? All right, apparently re normal recovery is not something we can do. So noted. Okay, well, if we could have recovered it normally, we would have gotten 87,000 back. Jeb is back. And let's verify that we have that contract complete. Well, it's not there anymore. And we've got money. So it looks like we've got that much. So yeah, we do have to make sure that we pay attention to the Mars probe next time. But before that, the Venus window. So that's what we'll be doing in the next episode. But for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.